Hi everyone, this is Denise with In Liquid Color, and today we are wrapping up our color mixing series with how to mix blacks. There are so many different things that we could touch on in today's topic that I don't think I could ever hope to cover every aspect, but I really hope that I cover whatever it is you clicked on this video for. So, should we use black? Should we not use black? How do you mix black? My mixes always come out looking like dark browns or some other color. These are some questions that you might be asking. Well, first off, in watercolor, just like in other mediums, we do have paints that are made from black pigment. One big difference between watercolor and other mediums, however, is that in acrylic and in oil painting, black is often used to shade a hue or to make it darker, just like whites are added to tint them or make them lighter. Now, I'm not saying that other artists and other mediums don't mix their own blacks because they definitely can and do. It's just that we all know that watercolor has its own unique qualities like transparency and luminosity that aren't represented in other opaque mediums and that are a little uh, bit more telling in this topic. Let's start off with an easy question. How do we make a color lighter in watercolors? Well, we don't usually add white like they do in a lot of other mediums we simply add different amounts of water to adjust the value to be lighter. So how do we make them darker then? Well, we can add black if we want to, but the trouble is, is that black pigments often have a tendency to dull or desaturate colors in addition to making them darker. Remember that thing I mentioned about luminosity and transparency? It plays a big role here. There are two workarounds to this. One of them is that you can buy special colors called neutral tints, or you can make your own blacks and darker shades of colors through mixing. Neutral tints are colors that are very dark and formulated to be as neutral as possible, but that don't lessen the intensity of other colors as much as a pure black would when you mix them together. This isn't a perfect solution, but it is very convenient for a little bit more lively, darker colors. I do keep a neutral tint on my current palette for when I need to darken colors quickly or to use uh, small amounts of black for details like tiny little eyes or other details on small paintings. So we've talked about making other colors darker, but why not just use a black tube of paint if you have really large areas that you wanna just paint black and they don't require other colors to be involved? Why not use it for shadows or for silhouettes? The short and sweet answer to this question that everyone likes to repeat is that there are no true blacks in nature. Well, I don't really like this answer because art isn't necessarily representative of nature. It is for me, given that I paint mostly animals almost exclusively, but that doesn't mean that every painter has my same needs. I think a better answer to this question is that two blacks are flat and can often appear dull and lifeless. In landscapes or still lifes, shadows can be painted with beautiful, vibrant, quote-unquote, blacks that contain hints of other colors. These colors provide depth and dimension that two black isn't able to convey in the same way. I'm going to show you two paintings side by side. Now I try to get these as close as possible, and there are some differences with the drawings, with the way that I painted them, with how much white, but try and look at just the colors in these paintings. Can you tell me which one uses black and which one doesn't? We'll come back to these at the end of this video, and I'll explain how I painted each of them. And hint, one of them only contains two single pigment colors. So before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make our own blacks using colors that you probably already have on your palette. Real quick, at the tops of this particular mixing page, I'm showing you the difference between mixing a color with black versus with a neutral tint. These two are Schmincke colors mixed with Schmincke's Ivory Black and Daniel Smith's Neutral Tint, and you can see that the blacks are a little bit flatter and less vibrant than the ones that have the neutral tint. So in art, black is the combination of the three primary colors. Pretty much any three primary colors, take your pick. You just need some version of a red, a blue, and a yellow. There are literally hundreds of ways to make blacks, but in today's video, I'm just going to show you some of my favorites that I have on hand. So when I think of primary colors, let's go ahead and use the ones that really, really jump out at us and scream like I'm a primary color. First, I'm going to be using permanent yellow light, pyrrole red, and phthalo blue. Depending on how much of each color you add to this mixture, you can get slightly different versions of what we would all still collectively call black. Mixing three primary colors can be difficult to get the ratios right, especially for beginners. If you remember back to last week's video on browns, we still want to keep in mind that concept of opposite colors on the color wheel and how they cancel each other out. 
So if the black that you're trying to mix is too green, you'd add its opposite, meaning red. If it's on the purpley side, go ahead and add some yellow. If it's too yellow, add a touch of red and some kind of blue, which will make kind of that purpley color to even it back out. It can be rather tedious and frustrating, but learning the skill is really invaluable and practice will help, I promise. So how about three other primary colors? How about an earthy set of primary colors? Well, they work too. Here I have Magello Blue from Mission Gold. It's a convenience color of two mixtures, uh, two different pigments, but any dark blue would be fine here. A transparent red iron oxide and quinacridone gold. They all make black as well. All right, well, a lot of you are probably saying that this is too much work and you don't want to bother mixing together three colors every time you want to use a little bit of black. No problem, because most of us have more than three colors on our palettes. Here I'm going to show you some of my go-to colors that only require two colors instead of three and are a lot easier to find that happy middle. Let's start off with Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine, which is a classic often referred to as James Gray after Jane Blundell. This is a lovely soft gray color that can, can vary from a cool gray to a warm gray. However, you're not going to ever get a really dark black with these two colors because they're just not dark enough to start with. If you substitute Burnt Umber for the Burnt Sienna, we will get a little bit closer, but it still will be on that grayer side. So what if I don't want gray? What if I want a nice deep black black? Well, then I turn to Phthalo Blue and Transparent Pyrrol Orange, both from Daniel Smith in this case. These dark, vivid colors will give you a solid black when mixed together. And the reason that this works is that the orange is the red and the yellow together already, so you don't have to mix all three primaries together in order to have them all present in this mixture. These two colors are also dark enough in their own values to mix this deep, dark color. We can look at some other combinations like Paraline Green and Carmine, which create a lovely deep moody black that often airs on the side of a deep purpley black, which is really nice for moody skies or landscapes. Phthalo Green and Paraline Violet also create a very deep, rich, foresty greenish black, and Endenthrone Blue with Quinacridone Burnt Orange makes a warmer black with hints of yellow coming through. All of these are really quick, easy mixes for black that can really breathe life into the shadowy areas of any of your paintings. One more triad that I wanted to show you, I discovered just the other day when one of my viewers, Ophelia, sent me some new Daniel Smith paints to try out, which I was super, super excited about. These aren't common colors by any stretch, but I do love this triad and I wanted to share it with you. It's Mayan Dark Blue, naphthamide maroon, and quinacridone deep gold. It's such a beautiful trio on its own and in their own right, and they also make a really, really lovely black and a rich dark brown if you add more of the red and yellow than the blue. I found this super, super useful when I was doing a portrait painting, and uh, I can't wait to use it more often in future paintings as well. And Tiffany, I didn't forget I didn't leave out your bright, bright orange that you love so much. Here is an Azo orange mixed with Midnight Blue, both from American Journey, that also make a grayish color. Sorry, it came a little bit later. I just wanted to slip that in there for you. Here are all the colors again for you to see up close, and I'll let a, li a bit of music play, and then we'll come back to that Hornbill painting to see if you figured it out yet.
All right, it's time for our hornbill reveal. The one on the right uses Prussian blue, transparent power orange, and ivory black, while the one on the right is simply just the same blue and orange, with the black tones being mixed from those two colors alone. The dark blues are created by adding a bit of orange but stopping before the color hits black, while the brown irises around the eyes were created using a, uh, the orange with just a little hint of blue to soften out that color. In the image that uses black paint in addition to the other two colors, you can see how flat the shadows and dark areas fall in that they don't have any kind of depth or dimension to them. As always, I hope that this video was helpful for you on your watercolor adventures. There are so many options to explore and no reason to be afraid of this elusive color. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite colors are for mixing blacks. I've really enjoyed spending this entire series with you, and if you're just finding this video, be sure to check out the others on secondary colors and the brown video that came prior to this one. There is a playlist all set up and ready for you to go. Our next mini-series is going to be starting next week. I'm not going to be taking a break between these two. And if you haven't already heard, it's going to be combining my love for watercolors with my passion for animal conservation. It's going to be an endangered species paint with me series where every week we will learn about a new endangered species, how to help them in their environment if you feel so inclined, and how to paint them, of course. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I will see you next time.